Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. A few months ago, after years of delay and countless hours of testing, the BE-4s for Vulcan's maiden flight were finally delivered to ULA. At last, it seemed that the problems with this engine were over. Until, that is, an engine exploded last month, something that Blue Origin didn't really tell anybody about until CNBC broke the story yesterday. Just how bad was this explosion? Is it a design flaw? A one-off? problem? Is it something that's going to delay the advent of Vulcan Centaur even further? Or is this much ado about nothing? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome to a quick bulletin here on The Angry Astronaut. As is usually the case, wasn't intending to talk about this particular topic today, but when news starts to break about very important matters, well, things have to get reshuffled, and there aren't too many things that are more important in the world of spaceflight than the state of the BE-4 engine from Blue Origin and how that's going to impact the troubled ULA Vulcan Centaur. So what exactly has happened here? What happened to the engine? How does this impact Vulcan? Is this a design problem? Was this just a one-off issue? Well, the thing that I'm the most frustrated about is the lack of transparency that continues to exist at Blue Origin and at SpaceX. Now, these companies are certainly entitled to a certain degree of secrecy, but when something happens that's going to seriously impact future missions that are being paid for by me and other American taxpayers, I think that that's something we should know about. And this story probably wouldn't have come out unless CNBC had actually broke it, and the stories regarding SpaceX probably wouldn't have come out either if NASA Spaceflight and others didn't have cameras at all of their facilities recording every move they make. So did the amazing staff at NASA Spaceflight manage to get this explosion on camera? Well, no, that was an explosion at the McGregor Test Facility for SpaceX. Raptor explosions happen all the time. That particular explosion happened in the middle of 2022, and the most recent explosion happened in the winter of 2022. But obviously, these explosions during the testing process haven't impacted the flight of Starship. Now, is this the case with what happened at Blue Origin? Well, the long and the short of it is, Probably, at least from what we're getting from Tori Bruno on the matter. But before we talk about Tori, we should also talk about the organization that broke the story, CNBC, and what they had to say. Quote, During a firing on June 30th at a West Texas facility of Jeff Bezos Space Company, a BE-4 engine detonated about 10 seconds into the test, according to several people familiar with the matter. Those people described having seen video of a dramatic experience explosion that destroyed the engine and heavily damaged the test stand infrastructure. The engine that exploded was expected to finish testing in July. It was then scheduled to ship to Blue Origin's customer United Launch Alliance for use on ULA's second Vulcan rocket launch. By the way, that's the rocket dedicated to the Sierra Space Dream Chaser. But here's the most important thing about the story, in my opinion. The people spoke to CNBC on the condition of anonymity to discuss non-public matters. However, later on, a Blue Origin spokesperson in a statement to CNBC confirmed that the company, quote, ran into an issue while testing Vulcan's flight engine 3. No personnel were injured, and we are currently assessing the root cause. We already have proximate cause and are working on remedial actions. Now, the Blue Origin spokesperson claims that they immediately made ULA aware of the incident. I think they're probably telling the truth about that. They also said that fortunately they will be able to continue testing engines at their West Texas facility because they previously built two stands for the tests. 
But here's what annoys me about this story. The only reason that Blue Origin revealed the information about all of this to the press is because there were whistleblowers who forced them to do that. They probably would have concealed this incident forever from the public otherwise. As I say, they certainly have their right to secrecy when it comes to proprietary equipment, but we're not talking about stealth fighters or nuclear weapons here. We are actually talking about engines that are dedicated to the first flight of the Sierra Space Dream Chaser, which is scheduled to make six resupply deliveries to the ISS on taxpayer dollars. And that's not the only thing that the taxpayers are paying for as far as the BE-4 is concerned. In addition, of course, the Vulcan Centaur is going to be flying the Peregrine Lander as part of NASA's CLIPS program associated with the Artemis program, and that too is being paid for by taxpayers. And and of course, Vulcan Centaur is also scheduled to deliver 60% of the next five years U.S. Space Force missions to orbit, and that also, of course, is being paid for by taxpayers, and the success or failure of the BE-4 has a direct impact on all of these future missions. What I'm saying is, it would really be nice if Blue Origin would at least tell somebody that they've had some sort of hiccup at their testing facility. They don't have to reveal any anything specific about the engines, just let us know that something happened and it might have an impact on their future programs that are being paid for by all of us. But all of that having been said, Tori Bruno, of all people, decided to be very informative about all of this. Again, it would have been nice to have gotten this information from Blue Origin, but here's what happened. The BE-4 in question failed its acceptance test, or its ATP. This test was passed by both engines that are on the first flight, or CERT-1 as it is called, of the Vulcan Centaur. That being the case then, this particular engine was sort of a lemon, and that's something that happens a lot. It's worth noting that Tori was queried multiple times by people on Twitter about this issue, and he answered lots of these questions. Again, he was very informative. First of all, he said that individual ATP failures are not uncommon, and this of course is why we do it. We analyze each for potential crossover as a discipline. Many other BE4s have passed ATP and gone on to hot fire. This one had an earlier ATP attempt and was reworked. Tori was also asked, quote, how confident are you that this was the result of poor workmanship and not a design flaw that is exposed under specific circumstances? And Tori Bruno replied, very confident. And he was also asked, it sounds like they identified the cause of failure and the cause does not apply to the engines you have in hand. Tori said that that hadn't been determined just yet and that they were going to do a thorough crossover analysis to make sure But many engines have been successfully ATP'd and hot fired. Acceptance test failures happen. That's why every individual unit gets tested. It sounds like to me that this is much ado about nothing at least probably. The question is, how long is it going to take for the investigation to be completed? Will the length of the investigation delay the advent of Vulcan Centaur, given the fact that the Centaur 5 upper stage needs to be reworked in Huntsville before they can put the thing back on the pad? I suspect that this one issue is not going to delay the advent of Vulcan Centaur any more than it's already been delayed. It's probably going to fly at at the end of this year, or more probably at the beginning of next year, given all the work that needs to be done on Centaur 5. And once again, do these sorts of things happen with SpaceX as well? Well, let's get it straight from Elon Musk while he was giving a tour to my colleague Tim Dodd. We blew, we blew a, a lot of engines up. Yeah. Uh, I've lost count of how many, uh, I think we might have blown up. 30 engines, or, uh, that's a lot. Enough said. But there are still two issues that concern me about this incident. Number one, the engine in question, as we mentioned before, was supposed to be used with the Dream Chaser, the second flight of Vulcan Centaur. How many engines are Blue Origin creating right now? Are they going to be able to keep pace with the massive number of Vulcan Centaurs that are scheduled to launch in the near future? And more importantly, when are we going to start getting 
getting some real transparency out of these companies? Why does Tory Bruno need to answer all of the tough questions for Blue Origin? Which, by the way, he did very well. Why isn't Blue Origin answering these questions? And also, why do we have to rely on the people at NASA Spaceflight to provide us with all of our inside information on SpaceX's testing procedures? And by the way, if you're ever interested in going up to the McGregor test facility, I would advise against it. SpaceX guards that facility very jealously. One person I spoke to was actually threatened by a security man with his gun. I think we should just leave that to NSF. And just to make a fair comparison about transparency, almost immediately after the Centaur test stand at Huntsville was destroyed for ULA during their anomaly, Tori Bruno posted not only information about the anomaly, but also a video clip of the explosion. That was very considerate of him. And once again, it adds a lot of credence to the other things he says. I tend to trust what Tori Bruno has to say more than a lot of his other colleagues. And this is an important distinction. ULA is not landing anybody on the moon for Artemis 3. ULA is not landing anybody on the moon for Artemis 5. However, both SpaceX and Blue Origin are. And given all of the problems that Blue Origin has experienced with the BE-4, I can only guess how many problems they're going to have with the BE-7, which is designed for use on the Blue Moon Lander. If they encounter similar problems with that engine, we could be waiting a long, long time before Blue Moon puts anybody on the lunar surface. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Very important to the success of my channel if you do that. Also, please check the description for various ways to support this content and my upcoming tour of North America. And as always, stay angry about space.